Hi guys, a couple weeks ago I gave a tutorial or an introduction on negative painting and today I have a follow-up of how to negative paint for beginners. So let's get started. What we need is a canvas, some brushes, and masking fluid. And right now I'm just sketching in that little fish that we're going to be drawing. We're going to be drawing two actually. And each fish is going to start out as a circle. And from there, the circle becomes lemon-shaped. And let's do the second one right now. So we will make that circle a little bit fatter with two lips on one side. Drop that down, and the tail is going to be kind of a V-shaped coming off of that circle. And if you think you messed up a little bit, I wouldn't worry about it. Fish are unique, and yours is just unique. Okay, so you will need to erase all the lines that went outside of the original circle. And you don't have to erase any other lines because we'll be painting over those. Now when I'm making the fin, the fin is just going to be a continuation of that lemon shape. So the fin should kind of be like, it'll be a V off of the front of the fish also. So just think of triangles kind of at an angle. Right now I am drawing kind of the floor of the sea and on the right side I'm putting a little bit of seaweed but you know it's so much easier to draw the seaweed with the brush and so that's what we'll do with the whiteout or the masking. So this is the masking on the right and on the left I put a drop of dish soap and with that dish soap, I am coating the nylon fibers of my brush. I, this is a dedicated brush because if you use your regular nice hair brushes, you will destroy them with the masking fluid. The masking fluid cakes up the brushes. Okay, I'm not being super careful with my lines. So this is some kind of like vegetation off the bottom of the sea floor or the aquarium. I'm just blocking in just some shapes. I'll color them later. What I am being careful of, and you'll see that in a minute, is the inside of the shape has to be completely masked. So I'll put another layer on top. If you don't mask it, then when you take the masking off, there will be like bits and pieces that show through and it will look very dirty. Okay, so I've started already masking in the seaweed. And with that, I am using, this is a flat brush. It's very slim, but it's a flat brush. And I can get all kinds of angles with it. So I'll start with the flat of the brush at the top. I'll push down, lift up, push down. And by pushing down, I'm getting the flat of, or the width of that brush to kind of span out. And I'm getting different widths and textures with this kind of a brush, with this method. Seaweed is not all uniform. It changes in the water, it flows, and so this is the mood that we're creating. It's also nice to overlap your seaweed. It gives a sense of depth, and that's what I'm doing right now. And these lines, I keep going over them. I'm very careful not to make a rough edge to the line. Even though it is seaweed, when you take the masking fluid off later and it's a rough edge, it won't look so nice. So some of these pieces of seaweed I go over again, especially the thicker areas, just because I want it to look really neat. Right now I have a very fine brush. This is maybe a size zero or zero zero, or it might even be my nail brush. I sometimes use that for this. Nail brushes are cheap, they're dollar store, and you don't mind, I don't mind putting it in the masking fluid because you know, the masking fluid is so hard on the brushes. With this fine nail brush, I can get thin little hairs off of each of the ends of the seaweed, and that's what I was doing. Right now, I'm putting in a few random bubbles, different sizes, and just a few here and there, some bubbles coming off the floor of the aquarium. And of course, the bubbles from the fish's mouths. The bubbles as they come out of the fish's mouth are smaller and then as they get closer to the surface they expand. 
So sometimes I'm drawing in a hollow bubble, and other times it'll be solid and I will color it later. And now for our materials. We will be using three brushes, and these are the brushes outside of the masking fluid brushes. Those I don't really count. So this is a size 4 silver black velvet. I am using also a size 1 or 0, 0, 0, I'm not sure, it's really small, and that's for the detail work. Um, I don't know the brand. And the other one is a wide Princeton New Neptune 2 incher, and that's what I use for laying down the water very evenly across the paper. Okay, what I'm doing right now is showing you the colors that I'll be using in this painting and how they blend. So this is for me to also understand the depths of the colors that I can get. And the colors I'm using are Thalo Blue, Thalo Green, Quinn Gold, New Gamboge, and Perylene Red. But about the Perylene Red, I only use that to kind of hype the color of the orange or maybe to get some of the darker colors in the purples and blues. Now I'm using two water cups and the one on the right is I've just dipped my brush one time using the Thala Blue into that into that water to rinse the brush and it stained the water terribly and so if I were to use that water when I was for example laying down this color on the canvas I would stain the canvas or if I were to use that water to uh, paint with the yellow it would be green. So that color is incredibly bright and it stains terribly. I am putting down a sheen on the paper right now and to get a nice sheen, an even sheen where the water just kind of, it's not pools of water but there is a sheen of water that will carry the paint as I drop it on. So that's what I'm going for. And this is looking pretty good. I think I might put a little more on the lower right part. The colors on my palette right now are the phthalo blue and the phthalo green. And these are the colors I'm going to use for the water. These two colors stain terribly. So if I put them on the canvas in the wrong place, I can't take them off. I can't lift them. They permanently stain the canvas. So I have to be very careful to not put the blue or the green where the two orange and gold fish are going to be. And of course I said that these, uh, you know, there's a lot of water on this canvas and so those colors are going to be carried and if I see the blue or the green starting to creep towards that orange, I need to dry the paper or a little bit to prevent that spread. And I can't prevent it entirely, that's fine. You'll see that I do get blue and green on the fish, but I use it as a shadow, and you'll see that in a minute. So obviously the upper part of my canvas right now is a bit drier, and I can tell that because the colors aren't flowing as readily as they are in the southern part, or in the lower part. So I'm starting to manipulate those colors, push them a little bit towards the edge of the fish, but not right up against it. Of course, those colors are going to, you know, bleed out just a bit. They'll have soft edges. This is what I want. And I want the colors also to be a variation of the blue and the greens and the combinations. And that's why you see me dropping in little hints of green here and blue there. The water is not just one color. It has refracted light in it, and by using these different colors, I'm hopefully trying to get some of that ref refracted light. I would like to keep a little bit of a lighter area in the center part of the canvas, you know, as light filters down between the fish, and so I'm going to not put a lot of paint in those areas. Along the bottom of the canvas now, I am hyping the colors. So the, the phthalo blue has obviously bled out quite a bit, but I want it to be darker, and I want that bleed to be more. And you'll see that beside the masking, I am putting in a little bit of color, because when we take the masking off, I want to have a really strong contrast of color beside the white masked area. 
I'm just sitting and waiting for those colors to bleed into themselves. Painting sometimes is about waiting, not just painting. This thalo green right now has a lot of water in it, and so it's going to dry quite lightly. I don't want to paint everything on the canvas, but I do want there to be hints of color and dramatic color in various areas. I am tilting the paper just a little bit. What I'm doing is trying to encourage that lower area to bleed more. And it seems to be a little bit wetter than the upper part. So I'm dropping in some darker colors and richer tones right up against where the floor of the canvas is going to be, or the floor of the <laughs> aquarium. And I'm encouraging those colors to bleed out, but they're not bleeding as much as I would like them to. So I'm trying to encourage them, and they need a little bit more encouragement, I see. So this is a damp brush and it has a little bit of extra water on it and I am just pushing some water into those stained areas. I'm, I have to be careful because this is how to make watercolor blooms or cauliflowers. If you drop a drop of water into an area that's kind of semi-dry, then you're going to get a bloom. But my canvas in the lower part was or is still damp enough that I'm not going to get the bloom and I didn't drop the water directly onto that. I dropped it into the unpainted area and encouraged the water to go down. And now I'm tilting the paper so that the water will go up, taking the pigment with it. And that's what you see, a little bit of pigment now going in that negative space between the two fish. I don't want it to be a dark uh, color there, but this is going to dry pretty light. I'm trying to lift a little bit of the blue that bled onto the fish area, but obviously I can't. I just lightened it a little bit. I couldn't lift much. Still tinting the lower part of the canvas. And I know some people are thinking this is really boring to see this tinting process, but most people, or many people who are starting out, they don't realize how much waiting they have to do between areas to let certain areas dry. They think it's just about constantly putting pigment on the, on the paper. This is not true. You have to wait, give it some time to dry, give some time for the colors to marry. I love that term, the colors are marrying. And guys, if you're enjoying this and you would like more detailed instruction on maybe color palettes, color mixing, artist tips, or maybe guided instruction while you paint, maybe you're interested in my Patreon Couple Paint. So what is Couple Paint? Well, Couple Paint is much like paint and sip, except I don't talk about the sip, and it's when two people are simultaneously painting together a picture or part of a picture to create a whole, and each person is painting on their own canvas. So for a few dollars every month, a couple, and this could be friends, family, neighbors, or those darling honeys, can enjoy the couple paints in my Patreon library, which I'm building right now, and the two new uploads that I give every month, one is in watercolor and the other in acrylic. And by the way, the one that you see right now in front of us is the Timmy and Tammy paint, and this is done in acrylic. So if you are interested in this kind of paint socializing, I will have the Patreon links below, and you can go check it out. So the colors have married pretty well on the canvas, and now I need to start testing to see just how damp the paper is, because I'm needing to add a little bit more paint to this layer while the paper is still somewhat damp, but not too damp that the paints are going to bleed onto my fish. So the paper is just damp enough that I'm not going to get any hard edges. And I have a damp brush right now, so it has a little bit more water in. And I'm smoothing out the edges where I don't want a lot of pigment to be. 
So I'm hyping the colors. And obviously, ooh, this area is drier because you can see that the line is harder. I brought in a damp brush. I dried it with my left hand. I often have a towel in my hand. If I don't, I use my hand by itself. My hand is always stained after I finish painting. But I spread out those colors. Going along the edge of the fin. I'm not going into the fin yet, but I'm going along the edge. I'm dampening this area so that the colors are smoother. And I saw that the colors were starting to bleed down into the fin. I didn't like that, so I, I dampened that area a little bit more. Then took a wet brush, or a very damp brush, and I pushed the colors back. And I'm dragging colors in small lines. And again, this area of the canvas is quite dry. I don't like that line. I want it to be softer. So I took a damp brush, dried it really well, and the color is not blending. So I'm going to add more paint to hide that line. And that's fine. This, I'm just going with what the canvas is giving me. This is water. You can be as spontaneous as you want. So now that is a little bit darker. And the line is quite clear, but it's not a hard line against the fin. And I'm outlining the lower part of the fin also. I'm moving slowly because the water, there's still a lot of water on the canvas. And if I move too quickly, those colors are going to blend and they'll go crazily into the fish. And I don't want that. So I'm just moving slowly. Right now, I'm going along the edge of that masked area again. And I do this two or three times because I'm building up layer. I don't want to have just one solid color. I want to have two or three so it's like a soft transition. And even if you only do two layers in your watercolor, the first would be your foundation layer and the last layer would be your detail, that's great. But I'm probably having three or four layers in some areas. I am dampening my fish, and you saw me use the hair dryer. Everything is completely dry now. Otherwise, I would not be dampening the fish because if the blue bleeds into the fish while I'm dampening it, I'm going to have a green fish. So everything is dry. I am just dragging out water into the, all of the fish that I'm going to be painting. And as soon as it's damp, as damp as I would like it, then I will start dropping in the paint. I am probably putting down two layers of water. And there I did a little bleed onto the watery area itself. I don't want the yellow to be bleeding into the sea. So I just picked it up with a brush. Or with a tissue, you can pick it up with a brush. Well, not as well, but yeah. Oh, this is my second layer of water. And I had a, a slight sheen before. Now I'm getting a very clear sheen so that I can put the water on and it will carry well. Okay, time to drop in the color. And I'm leaving just a little bit of an edge, a white edge, along the upper part of the fin. I can drag that out later if I want, but I don't yet quite want to go all the way to the edge. And it's kind of cool to leave that white edge. It's like light is catching it. It adds more interest to the paint. The lips are really delicate. You don't want to bleed here because this is, you know, anytime you're painting the face of any animal, creature, bird, human, uh, you do want to be really careful with the facial area. So I was really careful with the lips. And here you can tell that there's blue and green under my brush. Because it's dry, it's not getting, it's not interacting a lot with the blue. There's going to be a little bit of green discoloration, 
but that's okay because it's the the lower side of the fish and that could be a shadow and by the way I was testing out this picture which would be the easiest way to paint and I actually painted one where I masked the fish first I hated the picture because the fish looked like it was floating in cyberspace but it wasn't touched by cyberspace you know how when you get on procreate you color layers and the layers don't overlap in any way that's what it was looking like so it didn't look like it was part of the environment so it's better if you have a little bit of the blue and the green kind of flowing onto the fish because it like I said before it marries the fish to the environment and this by the way is Quin Gold a lovely color and it's the lightest of the yellows that I'm using so I use that one as my base color. This Quin Gold that I just put on has a higher pigmentation than the base that I was putting in but when you're painting wet and wet you put down the lightest color first and then you add your stronger colors to that lighter color and then they flow. Now this is the method for watercolor. If you're painting with acrylic you'll probably start with the darker colors first and move to the lighter. It's a very different style of painting and also very enjoyable. So this is the new Gamboge and I've actually spiked the color just a bit with the Perylene Red and I'm using that new Gamboge to kind of make lines around intensify some areas. What I am trying to do right now is to make the fish look 3D and to make it look like it has, you know, a little play of light on its fins. Some areas will be darker and some will have some lines. And a lot of times I can do a lot of that intenser color with just the Quin Gold. I put the Queen Gold down as a wash and then at the very edge of the wash I will put in a little new Gamboge with some of that Perylene or I'll tag in a little bit of the Perylene which is just off of the camera. You can't really see it. But as I said earlier, I don't use much of the Perylene. It's only a color intensifier in this painting. In that southern area of the fish, you can see right now it looks like quite a bit of perylene. It is just a hint. That is a very strong color. So you don't want very much in the water. And now I'm putting down a little bit of thalo green and thalo blue. If you want to put shadow in your painting, use the colors of the environment and my colors are the thalo green and the thalo blue and they make great shadows actually the blue makes really awesome shadows just a hint of the thalo blue and the thalo green and then I take a damp brush and push those colors down so that the thalo green is and the thalo blue is making just a thin line as if the fin had little lines. Very, very thin line. And by the way, this is the silver black velvet, size four. I love this one. It is. It holds a lot of water. It's got a very, very fine point and it's a soft brush. So it's very flexible. Some people don't like how flexible it is. I love it. I don't like drawing architecture with this kind of a brush. This type of brush is really good for the softness of animals that have curves and lines. But for architecture, you will want a, well, maybe you want a firmer brush, maybe a square or a flat brush. I just find that when I'm doing tr drawing tree trunks, I'm not, this isn't my go-to brush for that. I'm painting around one of the lines where the masking is, and this line represents you know where seaweed is going to be but I want there to be a sense of a shadow under the seaweed so I put in a little bit of a shadow using I think it is Quin Gold with a touch of thalo green and putting that right next to the white masking will give a sense of shadow once the masking is taken off and by the way I didn't do that 
against every piece of masking. I only did that in some areas because otherwise the fish might look a little weird because a fish is in an environment where there's refracted light and the light doesn't play evenly everywhere. So I just give a hint of some lines and shadows, but I didn't paint them all. So I'm just typing some of those shadows on the lower part of that fish. And maybe your fish had more blue and green that bled up into the fish. That's fine. So your fish will look like it's in a little bit deeper water or in maybe a murkier water or maybe the day isn't as bright, but your fish will be fine. And even if I try to copy my fish, my own fish, I wouldn't be able to because watercolor is not acrylic and it's not oil. Those two mediums are very controllable. Watercolor is its own little owner, its own little master. It does what it wants and we enjoy the process. Okay, we're going to be doing our second fish now and you guys already know the routine. You dampen the fish area and put a nice sheen down. And once it's very damp, and probably dampen it twice, get that sheen pretty good, you can throw in your color. We throw in the lighter color first, and then we start adding some of the darker color to get the shadows and to start putting in the idea that there's a three-dimensional object that we are painting. And remember as, you know, I was really light about how I penciled in my my fish. I didn't really care much about the penciling of the fish. I just got an idea of what the shape would be because this is such a simple picture. So now as you're painting it you can say well I don't really like the lines that I originally drew now that I'm putting color in so if you want to change those lines you can. By the way as you paint over these you will not see those lines again because if you copied me in my method of just painting lightly or drawing in the lines lightly, then you should be able, you probably won't even be able to see them. Okay, let me talk about this process you see right now. This process is called lifting. So I took a brush, and this is very wet paint. I took a brush, it was damp brush. I squeezed out the extra with my towel in my left hand, and then I took that brush and lifted some of the excess paint in some areas. And this is how I got kind of a highlight on the tail, two highlights on the tail. And then you saw me later, I put in a little bit more pigment around that. So I lifted it and that also lifted some of the water from that area so it's not going to be an area that's going to get a lot of diffusion. And then I painted a little bit more darker color around while everything was wet and it kind of, uh, no, there was no hard edges, everything was softly covered but I have lifted areas of pigment. To get these eyes, I or I guess I only painted one right now, I am just taking some of the colors from the environment that I created and putting in a darker combination. And I do the eye in two or three layers. You can do it in one, but for me, I was just like seeing where do I want my eye and is that really where I want it or what about the lines and the textures around it. I'm drawing in the fins also and I don't think this is damp. Well, the, the left fish is still damp, so a little bit. And you can tell that those lines that I'm putting in are a little bit softer than probably I intended. So I will have to do a layer, you know, the layer effect like I did for the other one. And the fish on the right, you can tell that when I put those fins in, that the color didn't bleed as much. So along each of those pieces of seaweed, I am just putting in a little bit of dark contrast. So I'm not painting the whole area. I'm just putting contrast right immediately along the edge of the seaweed so that when we do lift that seaweed, we have something that looks, you know, that seaweed will look very white against a dark color. And it, I'm not making it super dark. I'm just putting a hint of a line. In the background, I am just taking some of my very light blues or light greens and putting the idea 
of seaweed in the distance. And you can tell that as I paint in this eye on the left fish, that that fish body is still a little bit too damp for adding in the eye. And I realize, oops, you know, those eyes aren't going to be matching now because the one on the right doesn't have the shadow around the eye, and the one on the left, the, the paint is still so wet that the color bled. So we just have to know how to control our you know, like the water level in the paint when you are painting. And I do find it's really a good time since it's still slightly damp. It's still a good time to put in some lines and to get a little bit of a softer line. It's not going to be so hard just yet. When you're painting wet on dry, that's when the paper is dry, then you're going to get your hard lines. So the paper is still slightly damp. So the hard lines I'm getting are not super hard. They are faintly fuzzy. The one, If I were to paint with the same paint on the right, I'm going to get harder lines because that right fish is completely dry. And you see this tiny amount of phthalo blue that I have right now. It is such a tiny amount. But like I said, this stains a lot. And even though it seems like to be a very loud color, it is not loud at all when you are painting with it. And, you know, once it dries, it'll be quite light. But I'm just adding some ideas of bubbles because when I take the masking off, there will be white bubbles there. But it, actually, some of that area is so light, I'm not sure I'm going to see it. So what I am doing with this uh, phthalo blue is I'm very lightly putting like a half moon circle under each of those little bubbles or just a little bit of a phthalo blue highlight wash so that when I do take off the masking, I will have what appears to be a light shadow under some of those bubbles. Okay, and I am putting in some more seaweed in the back, and I'm just using the colors of the environment. I'm putting in blue seaweed, hello, and that is totally fine. I will add possibly some green seaweed later um, and mix those colors. And here we have another piece of seaweed that I'm adding in. This is wet on dry. So the background is dry and my brush is wet. And this is how you get, you know, specific detail. And I have very light pigmentation in that brush because the idea is it's a shadow in the background. So now I am lifting off the masking fluid and I'm using a, I forget the name of this, it's a lifter, uh, but it's, Specific, I'll leave the comments below and what the exact name is, but I lifted off all of the masking. You can see it's quite different, you know, this very shocking white against the color of the background, especially the blue. This colored pencil is, it's a Conte and it's kind of like terracotta or it's uh, earth tone anyway. And I'm just putting in a little bit more of the fin work and a little bit of the shadow along the edge of the fish just to make it look like it has a very clean outline. Didn't do much with the colored pencil. You can do a lot more. Uh, the people who are, the watercolors who are watercolor purists don't like using pencil or gel pen or anything. They only use watercolor. And they don't like wash either. Well, this is the first time actually I think I have used colored pencil. I thought I would give it a try. And I do like the effect. If I were to paint professionally, I would use only watercolor. But this is just an example and it's just for fun expression. Totally fine with adding other things. So now the colors I'm adding in the foreground, I'm using very light pastels. So we have a, the water is blue, could be blue and green. Actually in my real life setting, the water is more teal than what you're seeing online. I'm surprised at the color that you're seeing online. So mine is very bright 
And yeah, I love the color. I just couldn't ph photograph this color. Anyway, so the foreground is going to be light. The mid ground, mid area is going to be the yellow and the gold for the goldfish. And the background is going to be the shadow area. So if I were to paint the foreground really dark, I don't think this picture would have that much impact on the viewer. But by painting the foreground light, it feels like it's an aquarium. Like you have a light looking into the aquarium and you're seeing these joyful fish, or we want to think they're joyful, swimming around yeah, in our aquarium. So just adding some shadow. I'm using some darker greens. And I do a lot with the shadow. Again, I am a layer painter. I don't paint in one layer. So I will add two or three, usually three, maybe even four colors to get my layers in. And this, dear friends, is gouache. I love gouache because I use transparent watercolors. There is no way I could put a white watercolor and get back to the white of the paper. There's just no way. So watercolor artists who are not the purists, they're going to use the gouache. So I'm using gouache to get some of the white back along the edge of the seaweed. And this just adds so much more interest to the paper. It adds a lot more contrast. It really makes the picture look kind of beautiful to have all of this white. Before, I didn't have enough contrast, and that's why I needed to either maybe darken the blue, put darker eyes in, a little bit darker color on the fish, or I could add a lightener to the foreground, and then I would have more contrast. And this is what I need. So obviously, you can see that you can put con uh, the gouache in so many areas. I put it just a little bit along the fins, around the eye, and I think I use it you know, eventually to dot, put a little like pupil or reflect, a little reflect, uh, reflection of light in the fish's eyes. So here you see me putting in a little bit darker shadow and I'm still using greens lightly. For me, I love putting in layers and this is about transparent watercolor. With transparent watercolor, you can actually achieve photorealism by using colors. If you know how to really manipulate those colors and get them smooth, you can do photorealism. You just have to be really patient. I'm not that good yet, but I enjoy getting a lot of realism. So I put a little bit of pearling in with the greens and yellows, and there might be a hint of blue in that, but um, it made a dark shadow just for some of the areas along the vegetation at the floor of the aquarium or the sea. And these dark shadows at the base of the aquarium are then contrasting with the dark shadows in the eyes of the fish. So we're drawing in those last dark points and this is actually the center point or the focal point of our painting because the eyes are in the center and the eyes are the most intense part or color in this painting. So once you get those eyes in, put in a little bit of shadow around them just to give them depth, maybe add a touch of gouache, you are finished with your painting. So a few last comments. These colors that you're seeing are the actual colors or pretty close to the actual colors I was seeing. So I was seeing a lot of teal as I was painting and you were seeing a lot of cobalt. And this was the first fish painting that I did. And as I was filming it, I didn't realize that ha I was half in camera, half out. And so I had to refilm because I didn't think it was quite good enough to show you the processes of negative painting. But anyway, now you have two pictures in front of you of negative painting. You have your own. And I really hope you enjoyed the process and that you are excited about negative painting because as a beginner, you now know how to negative paint. And this is also when I'm supposed to say, hey guys, subscribe to my channel and check out Patreon, which is actually pretty cool. But I'm going to see you guys. I hope you enjoyed this negative painting and I really hope to see you guys again.